Not so loud. Oh, oh my God! Are you all? Would you all like that chair to sit on? Or? Yeah, would you? How's the sound out there? Yeah, you guys good? Yeah, we got thumbs up from one very man. Yes, thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're yeah. all lying. You're yeah. lying. Can you guys see if we sit, or do we need to stand for this one? Because there's so many of you. Yeah, I think we might just stand for this one. You're all right. Stand? Yeah. Um, what have you done in the past? Well, normally we have a. Normally there's not this many people. You're getting a massive crowd. We normally we have about to where this person is on the shoulders, so we can sit and it's fine. But yeah, they're way back. They're all the way back to the rest. Yeah, of them. we're talking about you. Yeah, yeah, we are. She's like, what do you want to talk about? What do you want to talk about? What? what do you want to talk about? Do you want to talk about that picture? I was fine until I came out here. Now, come on, talk to me. Yeah, we'll talk to you. Um, how have you enjoyed Bristol? Have you been before? Um, I don't know that I've... Well, actually, I was reminded that I've been to an event in Ghent. Oh, nice. I don't remember. I'm so sorry. But it could have been last week and I wouldn't remember it because I'm an old man now. Oh, yeah. What were you talking about? We're just talking about See, it happens. Do you do a lot of these? Do you travel a lot of these? Do you get to a lot of conventions? Do I have a lot of them? Yeah. Um, I, don't, I don't know what that would be. I, I do about three maybe a year. Oh, that's good. I, I think I may have done more in a given season, but um, I'm kind of, to be honest with you all, I'm kind of a reckless. Or uh, I live a secluded life, not quite hermit like, but I have acreage in California, uh, right near the coast, north of the city, overlooking the ocean, and it's it's lovely. It's <laughs> idyllic. So I'm not motivated to go out and do events and stuff, except for this kind of thing alone meeting people. Although, if I didn't come to events, I wouldn't meet anybody. <laughs> Which, in some respects, is fine by me. But then I realized that I'm really becoming cranky and ornery. And <laughs> I need the friendly faces of, in particular, Belgians. Correct. He knows what he's doing, this guy. He knows. Before, before we jump into it, there's something that Matt and I have wanted to talk to you about since yesterday. Uh, and that is something that, uh, that you guys won't know about yet. Uh, but in the green room for the guests, there is a pigeon that has been trying to steal all the food for the guests. And yesterday, you nearly tamed the pigeon. We saw you with the food, you're trying to get it to land. Have you, you, do, have you tamed it yet? Have you caught the pigeon? I'm a big, well, another name could be a dove. <laughs> a, dirt, a dirty dove. Yeah. yeah. Uh, no, I like animals in general. Uh, my favorite, for those of you who follow me in any respect, uh, know that dogs are my favorite human beings. There's one. Uh, I just have some kind of connection with, with canine animals. Um, and where I live, I have coyotes and uh, not pigeons. Oh, I do have pigeons, but peacocks. Oh wow! Bunnies and what? <laughs> we're so, for some reason, we're all we're all standing behind the couches. We can I'm leaning because I'm old and I have a bad back. Oh, yeah. Oh, no, 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 that's absolutely fine. And you look we'll, cool. We'll join you here. Now it looks like we're kind of in a front set of friends. Yeah, but you leaning is cool. Me, it's old man stuff. I know, I think you doing anything is just instinctively cool. I think you've just got such a chill vibe. It's gross. Such a charmer. I mean, look, look at this. Like, if I could have that, that head of hair even now, I'd be happy with this. Look at this. This is beautiful. Yeah. Just so you all know, the next time I see you, I may be completely bald. <laughs> I'm watching hair fall out, like, by, not clumpy, but just the odd silver flake going down, and it gets your attention when you're as old as I. 
Most people don't get this head in there. Like, Look, you should talk. I, 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 this is, this is, this is all wig. So, yeah. It's, it, it's real? It's, it is real. It's, some people don't believe it is, but it is. And yours is beautiful. Well, thank you very much. I mean, yes. but talking about beautiful hair. <laughs> That's so cool. I know that's the best member of my life. I'm not a big sweat. I would or worse on the gown. No, I want to do that to my hair. I can also do that. Do you want, like, to give me some braids? But uh, I don't think I, no, no thanks. I've been through that phase. So you were talking about uh, your love of dogs. So you've got, have you got dogs on your own? Not now. I, I lost my Australian Shepherd Andy oh. about eight, nine months ago or so. And I'm still mourning. It's like I haven't replaced her. Uh, my daughter has a dog. And my daughter started directing and being really busy as a, a creator of film and team. Well, films mostly. She's directing, so um, her schedule allows me to have her dog. However, her mother has had to take the dog more often than I have because I live in the wooded area that I live in. And my mother, rest her soul, who had small dogs, lost three of her dogs coming to my house. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, because I have so many coyotes and they just run the... Uh, it's sad, it's a part of life and nature and all like that, but I I have to have bigger dogs that can handle themselves. What was I saying? Well, we're just, we're just talking about how much we love pets and everything. I think it's lovely. I do, because uh, obviously you've, you've been known to play characters that are uh, um, very uh, sensitive and you know, lovable and everything. Yeah. And you have to be heroes and action heroes, but there's always a third dimension to it. Do you find that, the, that you have an affinity with those characters? Because clearly you feel one of those people as well. Well, let me put it very frankly, very bluntly and honestly. Um, any character that I've sustained over a period of time has to be, at least in great part, uh, a reflection of me because I'm not that great an actor. I've made my peace with it, I know it. Um, I have a lot of fun in front of the camera with the scripts that I've been able to help um, create a longer life for. But I'm realistic, so I, rather than create something that takes so much digging and deeping, and, uh, digging and deeping, <laughs> remember that. Um, it has to come, you know, from my natural personality. Which apparently some people find interesting. I, you know, can get bored with myself very easily. If, if you had, which of uh, your long-term characters was your favorite? Would you prefer Jack or Tiger? if you had to be that person in real life? Well, I don't know. Um, I, had, I have to admit that I had, MacGyver was my launching pad for getting to know the kind of the sinew of, of acting and production and it, it was a learning experience as was the soap opera I had done kind of out of the box when I got to California. So the love part, wasn't it? Was it? The love part? Is that the soap I did an episode, did one episode. But I, I wouldn't do a, a regular <laughs> series, regular and love both, but thank you for noticing. <laughs> but um, uh, Stargate was a lot more fun um, because, for one thing, I was older and, you know, I was waiting to kind of keep it going a little bit longer. Um, but I liked having a cast. You, you, you like, guys look like you really feel like family. You look so close on the set. Like, yeah, I mean, we, we became almost brother and sisterly. Like, like Amanda's still a buddy of mine. We we get along so wonderfully that uh, you know people want us to get together on camera, and now we're getting people saying they want us to get together in real life which is unrealistic. 
for some reason I can't figure it out yet. Neither one of us can, but we're buddies. <laughs> but it yeah, yeah, again, we stole it. That set, like, there's so many, like, so long, there's so many running gags in that show. So. Is that coming from a place of you guys just having fun on set as well? Just not like that. Well, no, the writing, uh, the right, Brad Wright was uh, kind of behind all that weaving the show run. The term is weaving all any kind of interpersonal relationships within the group. And then also having to put us on adventures every uh, every week. For, so um, I wouldn't. I, there's no way I could have put it together a show like that yeah. or sustain it. But the relationships were out of just a natural fondness for each other and respect. And I also had to learn a lot, uh, learn a lesson and not to improvise all the time. <laughs> it wasn't helpful. Fun for me, but <laughs> I had to slow that down. Did you get to improvise on, on the, the, the try to try to be? I mean, I'm going to say MacGyver, but earlier shows. Did you get to improvise on that? Not at all. I forgot when I was supposed to be mentioning those no shows, right? We're allowed to. We're allowed oh, to. you are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Wow. So, what show were you talking about? <laughs> like that one where you could make things. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that. I have no idea what you're talking about. Well, what is your question? Um, were, were you able to improvise in that role, or, or any other role, oh. really? Uh, yeah, not so much. Uh, just, not only that, I mean, it was, um, it was my first venture into, you know, uh, network television production. And in the beginning, I was very respectful of the regimentation. Later on, I started to make suggestions yeah. and uh, and run with them. But to start Trek is a great show. <laughs> <laughs> but the show that I was on with the word star in it, uh, Endgame. But um, we, uh, again, I was one of the executive producers. I had to make sure that things worked well on time and budgetarily, so I stopped parking around in <laughs> front of the camera a little bit. Have, have you ever uh, improvised making anything yourself? Because I, I was a big fan of MacGyver growing up, and it's leaked into my adulthood. I like to make things from all sorts of stuff that I find on me. Have you ever done that in your own personal life? What's the coolest thing you've ever MacGyvered? What's the coolest PG thing you've ever MacGyvered? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I, I, the thing is about MacGyverisms, it's in the dictionary so I can say it. Dang. Um, <laughs> it is now. Uh, was that if you go through life and try it if you have a mind to do but just going through your normal life, um, going to the bathroom, or doing the dishes, or going out to the garage. Notice as much as you can of the minutia, the small little pieces of life around you, how things work mechanically. Um, if you want to get really esoteric, get into how humans interrelate, that's a whole other category, but I, I just notice how to fix, not so much MacGyverized, but it's a natural notion of trying, because I'm conservation-minded um, from my father, and just awareness, um, that things are solvable so quickly on, on the fly as you're going through life, um, that you'll find a solution to whatever you, I mean, it's the smallest, most insignificant things I'm talking about. Um, I can't even come up with an example right now. I'm so flustered. But, um, but try that. I mean, just literally, just start noticing the smallest things. And if you have a task um, to do to perform, and something trips you up or you're missing something, look around. Just 
take in what's, what's about you and uh, maybe something will replace that. My house, I mean, I have enough money, with all due respect, to be able to buy something new if it breaks. I can't tell you the last time I bought something new. I just keep fixing it or making my brother fix it. Uh, mostly. That, well, that's the answer to the question. Is get a brother to fix it. <laughs> no, but anyway, that's just the basic philosophy of, you know, using, using stuff, you know, helping yourself out. Anyway. That's right. I could go on, but I won't. Uh, yeah, we do need to uh, go to the audience as well, let them have some questions. You guys want to go to question, yeah, your hand up. I'll come down to the front because you're easy, and then Thomas has a microphone. We'll get as many of you as we can. Hello. Thank you for coming to Melbourne again. Uh, I saw you in um, I was wondering if any of the Mangai versions, if you ever had any input on that, or if they're all like the Okay. Yeah, you all hear the question? Yeah. <laughs> God, she's right there and I barely hear it. Um, yeah, we had uh, uh, technical consultants. We had writers that would write certain obstacles in the way of saving the day to simplify. Um, and if a writer writes it, we have to get a technical advisor to see how could we accomplish this with these elements and this environment. And they just go to work, you know, these mostly engineers and uh, scientists. We had a whole bank of those guys at our beck and call. And they had so much fun at our expense sometimes. <laughs> no, but it was fun see what they come up with. Um, were you gifted any gifts from the Stargate and MacGyver? Oh, did you have, did we, have you got anything from the Stargate or MacGyver sets? Do you have any props or gifts? Yeah. Yeah, did you get anything from the, the show? Well, on MacGyver, uh, you all know Victoria Knox, can I say that? Yes. Uh, the Swiss Army Knife Company. Well, they, in the beginning, we made contact with them and were able to, I mean, they were able to supply us with, as we told them we were going to use it for, and it became iconic to us. I mean, it was already an established institution. Um, but after a while, I think they, well, they stopped sponsoring us, basically. They stopped giving them to us. <laughs> anyway, I've got about, uh, I'd say about 30, 35 different kinds of Swiss Army knives of all kinds, and they all have wounded me somehow. <laughs> I, I can't keep one of my bloodstream, but. <laughs> It's nice to have something that recognizable as a you know, part of a legacy that we can grab on to. Uh, we got another question here, yeah. Uh, hello, thank you. Um, you have done the casting and in particular, I'm going to have you grow in the world of cinema and Hollywood. Uh, she's back to actor of uh, to uh, production, and so uh, what do you think about that? That um, sorry, say that last bit again. Uh, what do you think about the the grow up of Amanda Tati? Because uh, sorry. <laughs> it's, it's, you're doing better than I would. Don't uh, worry, you're doing great. Um, uh, il a vu Amanda, euh, euh, il Amanda in Stargate. Amanda in Stargate, yeah. And now she's project. So oh, yeah. what do you think about the grow up? What do you, so Amanda in Stargate is now a producer and she's doing other roles. What do you think about uh, people like Amanda going on to do different things like producing? 
figure roll. Is that it? So. What did you get? Uh, the evolution, uh, the evolution of Amadan Tapu um, in actual production. Yeah, what do you think about Mandy Griffin and Annie Tapu Yep. Thank you. Thank it, you. It was absolutely a natural progression for her. She uh, is one of the brightest women I've ever met. And, um, well, brightest human beings I've ever met. We have a great rapport. It's very, it's based in comedy mostly, and humor, sense of humor, but also an appreciation for kids. We both have, you know, our parents are. How do you say it? We, we both have one kid, and um, uh, her as an actor, I think she. I don't know, I think she just had aspirations to direct and she was surrounded by it for those, whatever, how many years we were doing Stargate and it was a natural progression for her and she became so good at it that she works constantly on it in Vancouver primarily but gets hired to do other things um, kind of around the world but she's just a superb human being and there was, you know, she wasn't going to limit herself in anything. Um, she had that kind of strong will as a human that definitely as a woman, she's no holding her back is what I'm saying. Yeah. Amazing. All right. Thank you. So it's really hard to hear. Uh, but yeah, thank you very much. Um, I don't know where the microphone is now, it's back there, we'll try and get around here. Hi there, um, in my imagination, you drive with the Jeep and your dogs on the road trip. Is that true or another Jeep or another car? <laughs> this, this woman's image of you in your personal life is driving around in a Jeep with dogs. Is that accurate? Uh, I would change the vehicle these days. Well, you guess Jeeps are, I don't know, they're not as comfortable as you might make them out to be. I've had many Jeeps in my real life. Um, and, you know, they're cool to a point. But then, eh, dogs on the other end? It doesn't matter what I'm driving. Come on. <laughs> yeah. would, you, would you like a dog toy? What? Would you like a dog toy? Yeah, would, 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 I, would you like a dog toy a Jeep for you? Yeah, it's fine. <laughs> it's a little throwaway thing. It went absolutely terribly. No, it's, it's ter <laughs> terrible of me to make you repeat a bad joke. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It really, uh, I it really hurt more on the second Thank side. Thank you. I'm never letting them do that. Oh, it's all right. Everyone recorded it, so... Yeah. You had a question. Thank you. Wait for the sound man to catch up to you. Hello? Yeah. Uh, yes. Uh, what is it more about your personal life? What do you like to do for fun? What are your hobbies? What are your hobbies? Uh, well, I, I can reference what I used to do. Now it's pretty simple. I, I own a motorcycle, a big BMW. 1200. It's a touring bike on and off road bike. Does very well on, on the road. I live right adjacent, like about 200 yards from um, Pacific Coast Highway. It runs the length of the west coast of North America. So on any given day, I'll pack up my uh, day's worth of supply or whatever and just take off and, and drive north and then take these tendrils up into the, some of the mountain ranges along the way. And it's all right right along the ocean. So it's peaceful, it's meditative, it's adventurous at some time. So that's one of the things. But mostly I'm, I'm I go to the dog pound, the local dog facility uh, in town, uh, nearby, and I go there and volunteer 
whatever they need, whatever they want. Um, mostly it's just a selfish endeavor because I like just being around them. Yeah, it's really selfish to volunteer at a dog shelter. It's so selfish. So well, I mean, you know what I mean. I mean, I'm getting more out of it, I think, than the dogs are. Certainly more than, you know, the Agora dog, dog pound is. But, um, so that, that, and I've been spending a lot of time trying desperately to write, or to chronicle some memories that are fading. Um, so I got to write real fast. But um, trying to chronicle something, I don't have, right now I don't have the discipline or the focus to be able to do that specifically. But I mean, when I, my daughter won't even like bother trying to read my texts. I mean, literally, my texts can be like 10 inches long. And she'll just look at it and just say, Max, yeah. And I begged her to try and read it to see if I should go any further with the thought. But she's not having any of it. <laughs> anyway, I, I get complaints about... What I'm trying to say is I, I, I'm trying to write something that uh, reflects what my head is doing and has done. Uh, because what it's doing now is fading quickly. And it's, uh, it feels manic in there, and I want to get it all down. I think everyone here would want to read that, right? So maybe that would be a bit more of a push. Yeah, who wants to get Rich's texts? <laughs> <laughs> well, you all know, or some of you know, Kate Ritter. Yes, uh, the website. I, I can't give you the, the formal name for it, but it's... Uh, Kate Ritter's the, the lady who runs it, and she's just been so patient with me because I'm so bad at responding. I'm worse than my daughter sometimes. My daughter doesn't bother. But Kate has been running this, this website for many years. She told me like 20 years, is that possible? And um, uh, I owe any kind of I don't know what uh, exposure or life in this business. Is this a business? Yeah. Anyway, to to Kate. So if you're interested, in, I'm trying to feed her some of these things that I'm thinking about writing, but all in good time. This has all been a, a terrible joke on you because my book is for sale in the lobby. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Yeah, we anyway, one more, Matt. Yeah. No, just one more. Oh, sorry. Yeah, sorry. Uh, we need to get the microphone. Uh, sorry, yeah. Can we get the sound on it? Try again. Hi. So, in the category, you always manage to sit with the things you've got in your pocket and the things that surround you. So, what have you got in your pocket right now? Good Oh, yeah, that's a great question. 70 Swiss Army knives. Let me check. This is Jeez, this legal. This is, this is why you're behind the sofa, just uh, in case there's something there. This is a note that was handed to me by a fan. Um, I haven't read it yet, but said I would. That's why it's in my pocket. And next to that is a mint. <laughs> And for the next the 10 minutes, Richard Dean Anderson will escape the stage. He did. <laughs> there we go. Set fire to the paper using the sun. Yeah. I think that was the perfect question to end on. Yeah, I think it was absolutely yeah. sublime. Yeah. And guys, I mean, you're lucky you all. You absolutely love this man, so please show it. Um, Thank you. Thank you so much. Can I say one thing? Um, thank you all, seriously, and spread the word for those who aren't here, uh, how much I appreciate the patience you all exhibit by, first of all, coming to one of these things, I don't know how you do it, but standing in any line that is, like, kind of moving in my direction, I know it moves so slowly. Uh, and I apologize for that. It's my fault, I think, 
complete responsibility because I don't know how other celebrities do it. I'm a celebrity, I guess. <laughs> but I can't not make eye contact and, and make some kind of contact with you all. It's not just a machine. You all know William Shatner? Boom, boom, boom. He's an adorable old man, but... <laughs> But I can't do that, so that's why it takes so long for you all to get to the front of the, the, the line. Um, so bear with me, I can't change at my age. Um, I'll say hi, but uh, that, that's why it takes so long. It has nothing to do with the organization, although there are some problems with that. Looking for the, anyway. Uh, so thank you for your patience and thank you for receiving me to your lovely country. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. What an honor.